Yo everyone, what's up? This is the Ultimate Engineer Guide. In this video I'm going to show you the core skills of every single Engineer Soldier in the game and how to use them to the absolute maximum power. Now in the beginning you will see the basics, meaning the basic skills, the basic perks, how to equip your Engineer so he has not only Engineer skills but also actually good fighting skills. And then we're going to go to specific combat situations and how to solve them in a way that you can overcome any enemy teams. Because, contrary to other classes, engineers actually can give you skills that defeat way superior enemy teams. Especially if you're on the defense, but also as we're going to learn on the offense. So, let's see and enjoy what we can do. Now, the first question is, how do you get engineers? Well, as you can see, this squad here is in deep need for a good engineer because we unlocked the engineer engineer slot for the squad and now we need a specific engineer soldier. Now we go to logistics, go to troops reinforcement and here we can see all the soldiers we already unlocked and now we just buy a random engineer. Now we're gonna buy this engineer and they all cost one silver obviously and you just put him in and now you got yourself a nice engineer in your squad. Now this basic engineer comes completely naked. He doesn't really have much equipment, he has only the starter beginner rifle and he has either a shovel or a knife. And well, here's the thing. You absolutely want to make sure your engineers are the soldiers with the best equipment of your army. If you're new to the game or if you're low on orders or if you just started a campaign, make sure you get the goodies to your engineers first and only then to your, to, to your other soldiers. Reason for that is the following. Your engineers need to carry the game, especially by building ready points in the beginning of a game. The simple and fast summary of why ready points are good is every ready point is like another around another teammate for your whole squad, for your whole army. So if you're playing 10 versus 10, having one rally point is like playing 11 versus 10. Having two rally points is like playing 12 versus 10. They have diminishing returns. After around five rally points, it isn't as effective anymore. But it's still, the team with more ready points usually wins. So ready points are absolutely important. Also, you want to be able to, especially if you're attacking, and most people like attacking more than defending, that you can quickly rush towards a new objective. And the only way to actually have any value out of being there first is to have a fast rally point. Because then you make sure, even if you die, which is going to happen for sure, your other teammates can quickly spawn and have lots of pressure on the new objective, much more pressure than the defenders who will also spawn. So ready points are the most important thing. Speed is also extremely important. Now there are two ways for your engineers to gain much more speed. The first is by actually moving faster. And for that purpose you really want to have either a weapon with a bayonet, though these weapons aren't that fast, even with bayonets, and they drain your stamina very quickly. The optimal version is to go into the menu for basically trinkets, as you can see here, equipment delivery, and you get yourself an axe. With an axe your soldier is gonna run maximum fast, no way to run faster by normal means in the game, and his, he won't drain his stamina as quickly as with a bayonet weapon. So this is extremely good, and every single time you hit a soldier in melee he's gonna instantly die. Bayonets actually, depending on where you hit, don't always die, but axes always one-shot enemies. So axes are absolutely worth it. They only cost one silver and <clears throat> having the advantage of a very fast soldier is absolutely worth it. But you, but all, what you else want to do is you want to give him a much better weapon because, well, at least give him the, star, <laughs> the maximum star weapon you have. Because your engineers, if you play them in the beginning of every time you spawn a squad, are gonna engage very often, much more often than other soldiers. So having them with the best weapon doesn't only have great flavor, it also actually makes sure you can profit from your expensive weapons much more often. Now, besides that, you also obviously want to have the med kit. You can now, after this basic, and I absolute, this is the absolutely basic equipment, this X I also consider absolutely basic, because the difference between an engineer without an axe or with an axe is extreme, so you really want axes on them. Now you can go further. Obviously grenades, so I strongly recommend explosive grenades because they make sure you can actually deal with tanks. Now, <laughs> since you're already really fast, 
the explosion pack becomes better. Because being fast, being able to outrun the enemy, uh, the enemy tank, being able to flank the enemy tank without getting shot by him, because uh, turret rotation, really important if you're fighting against tanks, and being able to well outrun the turret rotation is really helpful. Now the first real decision you have to take is what kind of backpack do I give him? You can give him either, well, a, back, a normal backpack like that, so you can give more inventory. In that case, you can give him two medpacks, so he can heal twice, or heal once, and when he gets down, he can still sa save him. Or you give him tools, now you can save yourself after being downed, and repair random vehicles, which gives you a little bit, not enough, but still a little bit of experience. Or you go the, well, offensive route. Now, some people give ammo pouches to the engineers. This is only worth it if you use weapons like the... Like the... Actually only worth it for FG42s. Literally every other weapon in the game, it's not worth it giving them. The much better version is give them grenade pouches. Now the reason for that is the following. You can do one simple thing. Now you have one grenade for tanks. And now you can just fill up with whatever you want. Yeah, You can have these grenades and just completely spam the enemies. Completely spam the enemies. You could also have Molotovs. Now you can defend whatever structures you build, whatever s stuff you, for example, barbed wired an entrance and enemies are pushing through it, get stuck in the barbed wire. Well, guess what? Now you can just Molotov it. Now there's no way for them to escape. Or if you're the first soldier attacking somewhere, now you're flexible. Before you attack a normal, after you, after you rushed forward, built a rally point, you can now throw a grenade into the enemy position kill a bunch of dudes, then throw possibly another one to kill the rest, and then throw a Molotov behind the objective so enemies can't get in, and then you already are capturing the objective alone. So you literally become a one-man army by having an engineer that's very mobile, has huge of offensive power, and that also can build stuff. <laughs> and he literally also doesn't need uh, ammo pouches because he can build ammo boxes for himself. So yeah, this is the basic way to build an engineer, and if you want to see the absolute perfect way to build an engineer, well, the strongest engineers in the game basically are the Berlin engineers, and here you see, well, here you see my personal optimal build, you give him the best weapon in the game, you give him a sword, because swords are like better axes, they're also one shot, and they're also, but they're also faster than axes. Also give him mines, either interpersonal mines or inter-tank mines, I prefer the tank mines because they have higher impact. Three different grenades, uh, a flask. So if you run vast distances, you actually can recover your stamina. The 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 sword flask, also the the X flask combo is also really recommended. And of course, a grenade pouch and a med pack. Now regarding perks, you want the following: absolutely, absolutely level up your engineers to five stars. It doesn't matter much if it's engineer one or two. Actually, one of the few classes where it doesn't matter. But you really want to have 5 stars, so you can get 14 or 16 yellow, giving you the fast building speed. This is the absolute best perk. Absolute best perk. And you're gonna see a little bit later in the clip how much difference this actually makes. Also give them vitality, because these soldiers absolutely need to survive. And they absolutely want vitality. And then it literally doesn't matter much. For the yellow perk, well, if you have a fast firing weapon, give them vertical recoil. Really good for full auto, little bit good for semi-auto too, or just give them the 10 costed yellow perk for additional survivability, so they actually survive longer. Yeah, doesn't matter much. Weapon changing speed is also quite nice, because you can switch faster from your from your hammer to your weapon. Also, if you're running around with an axe or a sword, you can switch much faster from the sword to the hammer to build something quickly. And then, well, whatever, you can change, changing pose is also nice, because if you're building on the ground, lying down, and you stand up to shoot, it's all, it also gives you a little bit of an advantage. So let's take a look at the extreme impact of fast building on your engineers. If you build a rally point with a normal, slow building engineer, he takes 12 seconds to build a rally point. These 12 seconds apparently are way too long for the average so short attention span person nowadays. So, yeah, for those especially, use fast building on your engineers, because now, by being able to build 50% faster, it will only take 8 seconds. Yeah, so you get it by dividing 12 by 1.5.
Now there's another way to build even faster and this is this here. Now let's repeat it. If you build something, you can click X on the structure that you're building and having other engineers in your squad, especially in your normal engineer squad, will force them to help you build the structure. And then it only takes around four seconds, so four and a half seconds to build an engine to build a ready point. So you see, f fast building is extremely good, much better than normal building, and having conditional engineers nearby is even better because then this, the building speed explodes ridiculously fast. With an engineer squad, you don't you not only get the advantages of being able to build the specific structures that only engineer squads can build, but you will also be able to build them extremely fast. And this means you can build anti-air guns in around 2 to 3 seconds. You can build machine gun nests in around 3 seconds. You can build anti-tank guns in around 2 to 3 seconds. You're literally lightning fast. During battle, while you're being shot at, you can build a huge structure faster than normal soldiers reload their weapons. And the funniest thing, if you need a good defense during battle, just build an anti-air gun. <laughs> There's no better defense protecting you than a big huge anti-air gun in front of you. Now imagine some annoying enemy builds something in front of you. Well, you can, as you know, press J and destroy the structure that an enemy built. Now doing this with a normal soldier is super slow, as you can see here. It takes 9 seconds. It depends obviously on the structure and an enemy armor box takes around 9 seconds. If you have an engineer though, it only takes 4 seconds. It's much faster. So you see, destroying enemy stuff is even faster with your engineers. So extremely useful. Especially if your enemies spam to tunnel full of tank blockers and barbed wire. You, ca you barely can shoot away tank blockers. So you really want to have some engineers that can, that can quickly disassemble the stuff that your enemies built. Also you get some juicy experience for it. You already know that the rally point is the most important structure. You also know about the ammo box that your teammates and you yourself can use to get new ammunition. Now comes the barbed wire. Well the barbed wire has a very nice effect. Whenever an enemy touches it, or a teammate also, he will be slowed down significantly and he will take damage over time. He doesn't even need to move in order to take damage. As long as he touches it, he's gonna take damage. And you're gonna get building assists as for every single engineer structure that's gonna be used by you or by a teammate. Now, what many people don't know with barbed wire is you can make it stick out of the wall. It's not completely sticking out, only a little bit, so it's balanced. And the effect of this is the following, especially in invasion games where your enemies are gonna either get inside a building to capture it or also be able to stand outside, as you can see here on the right screen, it sticks through the wall, your enemies won't be able any longer to capture the objective out standing outside of the wall because now the barbed wire touches them. And you're gonna have a nice alarm system because you will get notified with your building assists about enemies touching your barbed wire. <laughs> And you will know, oh, there must be enemies hiding, sitting behind the wall or trying to get close. Alright, to sum up, the basic engineer structures are rally points, ammo boxes, tank blockers, sandbags and barbed wire. Every single engineer in the game, no matter in which squad he is, can build them. For the other structures, like machine gun nests and so on, you need specialized squads. Now here I'm going to show you how to use these three defensive structures, barbed wire, tank blockers, sandbags, to their fullest potential. Now you don't need me to show you that you can build a tank blocker on a road and a tank won't be able to drive anymore. <laughs> you can also capture tanks with tank blockers. If you want to see how to do that and how to use this together with some other combos, you can watch the How to Engineer series where I show it. Here, you can, here we're going to see first how you take use of the well length and thickness of the barbed wire. Enemies will be coming up these, these, these stairs. Now, if we have... If we block the stairs of barbed wire, they won't be able to, well, physically get through them. They actually have to destroy them, otherwise they get stuck. And they can't even turn around and shoot us, because, as you can see, the barbed wire also covers the stairs. Now, next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build some tank blockers, as we already did, in the doorway. Reason for that is simple. The best way for enemies, or the only way to capture this, is by running through this area. They can start shelling us with grenades, with flamethrowers, with some heavy equipment and so on. The tank blockers act like a skeleton, meaning you have a hard structure that can't be easily destroyed. So no matter how many grenades they throw, they may blow up our, our barbed wire and our sandbags, 
but the tank blockers are always gonna stay there. And during fights, no one, literally no one has the time, or will take the time, to destroy these tank blockers. So these tank blockers make sure we can't get blown up. Also not by enemies who are smart and actually build stuff like anti-tank guns and machine guns to start shooting us. Heavy machine gun nests can easily destroy sandbags, but not tank blockers. So yeah, this is a strong feature, a very strong defense. Around that, facing the enemies, we obviously build up wire to slow them down. And on our side, we build a soft defense, the sandbags. The sandbags are bullet sponges for normal bullets. And they are, I, I can't repeat it often enough, protection against flamethrowers. Flamethrowers are extremely overpowered if you play against smart enemies. And sandbags are the best countermeasure to enemy flamethrowers. And now let's take a look how this works out. You see the enemies are pushing really, really hard, extremely hard, but <laughs> they are slowed down. There were already around 20 enemies, we, we barely have 5 to 10 defenders active, but it still works. They haven't even captured yet. And another nice thing is, if you have so many structures built, you, you can start spamming your molotovs and other grenades because your enemies won't be able to run away because you blocked everything. Now here we see the exact opposite situation. We are attacking the same exact objective and the enemies weren't smart, they didn't build any things to slow us down. And you see we instantly got to this area. Here the map designers were smart though, they built this little box so attackers have a chance to get closer, but the open field is still extremely bad for us. Now we need obviously some defense structures to be able to get close without getting instantly killed. So the first thing you do is we build sandbags. You're gonna build them diagonally, because if you build them all in one straight line, well guess what, you can't get closer, because you will have to jump over them and it will be shot. Also the left and right side would be exposed. Here I built one and the next one I built a little bit left and the next one also a little bit left. So you can go le from left from, from right to left without being shot. Now the enemies are still using fire which is extremely effective since if you are a defender, well enemies won't be able to get close. But here comes the magic and it, it is actually magical because it looks very simple but it completely changes the game. I blocked this tunnel now with sandbags. Uh, it's just two sandbags for in, in like around the tunnel area and it's two sandbags around our well like 10 meters away and now look what happens we attacked with around 20 soldiers nothing really not, no one got really close but after i built the sandbags we started capping guess what look what's going on here we have so many soldiers approaching and we see bullets flying but these bullets don't hurt us because, <laughs> because these sandbags are perfectly saving us only two sandbags here and two sandbags behind us and the whole the whole flow of battle changed. We went from a situation where it was impossible to get close and to attack because, because well, we were exposed in an open field and enemies could easily shoot us like here. We went from that bad situation to a situation where we have two little areas of defense but these little areas of defense are all you need to successfully attack and capture an objective. For the end I'm going to show you the highest level of strategy that you can use as an engineer. Here we are defending and the enemies are spawning behind this house and behind this wall. Also they are spawning on the right side of the map. But the right side of the map is already controlled by our teammates with tanks and machine guns and so on. So the only easy way for the enemies to somehow attack us is on this left area. Now what did I do in the last minute of the game? Whenever I had time I built some, I built some barbed wire. First of all to block the bottleneck through this wall, in between the wall and then left side of the wall and then also in front of the wall because every enemy that's gonna jump over the wall will instantly get stuck. Also if you have the time make sure you build a second layer of barbed wire because enemies when they see one barbed wire almost always are gonna destroy it. But if they see a second player almost always they're gonna run away because they know oh my god this <laughs> most likely I won't survive this I won't survive having to spend 10 seconds destroying this barbed wire here. So they, they, most of them don't know what to do, get confused and lose even more seconds and then you can just shoot them or make them catch a Molotov. Also, this strategy terraforms the battlefield in a way that the enemies can't properly attack anymore. Because every single minute or even second that they give me to build stuff, I'm gonna build stuff. And the more stuff I build, the closer the front line shifts towards their grey zone. So the longer they fail at applying pressure to, on us, the closer our frontline gets to their spawn and the further away they get from the actual objective. 
So this is how you completely change the flow of the battle by making sure the enemies can't operate in the way that they usually would and by changing and manipulating the area to what is actually advantageous to you. Also, for good measure, build some tank blockers in here because now our team can actually hide behind them. I don't build sandbags in this situation because they constantly throw grenades and constantly throwing grenade means, yeah, <laughs> the sandbags won't survive. But the tank blockers will perfectly survive. You can actually hide beh behind them very well. Also, you barely can hide behind sandbags and shoot at the same time, but you can perfectly hide behind tank blockers and shoot at the same time. So yeah, tank blockers, I basically never use to, to block actually tanks. I use them always as a st very strong defense against grenades and against enemy bullets. So they are very, very underused, extremely underused. You better build them. You're going to enjoy lots of fun and nice games once you start doing it. So that's it. Now you know everything you need to know and much more than most players playing this game using engineers or at least trying to do so. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe so that our nerd army grows and we can take over the world with our great engineering. Until next time.